Hello students and welcome to my video on cellular communication. Uh, go ahead and pause the video and see if you can remember how to answer these questions. All right, describing the following methods of cell communication, autocrine, juxtacrine, paracrine, synaptic, and endocrine. Those would be intercellular communications. And in number two, how do intercellular communications or between cells cause intracellular or within a cell responses? All right, let's dive in. Hey, it's my kids, minus Rory. Sorry, didn't have a picture of them uh, readily available on my computer in PJs. Why am I putting a picture of my children in PJs? Johnny loves his airplanes. It's because PJs is a good way to remember all the cell signaling pathways. P stands for paracrine, E stands for endocrine, A stands for autocrine, J stands for juxtacrine, and S stands for synaptic. So what are those? Autocrine means it works with itself. So auto is a prefix that means self. So it can self-stimulate. So, ooh, I don't have a picture of it, but it would just send a signal to itself. A lot of bacteria works this way, cancer cells and some immune systems. Juxtacrine are cells that are touching each other. So you, in the Khan Academy article you read about it in a Bozeman Science video, you saw uh, immune cells touching each other. Another example could be heart cells that are touching each other and they're able to share a message. Paracrine signaling is when it goes over a short distance. So here the cell is uh, stimulating other cells nearby. It works a lot with uh, growth factors, with platelets and clotting. Um, and then there's a whole branch of paracrine signaling called synaptic signaling dealing with our brain. And I showed you and talk to you a little bit about uh, synapses dealing with autism and um, really kind of harked upon don't do drugs, right? Drugs mess with the neurotransmitters in here and dealing with how does our, how do our brain cells transmit these electrical signals to chemical signals to nearby cells. And then you probably started thinking of cellular communication with hormones or long distance signaling and that's endocrine. So when you uh, when your pituitary gland secretes hormones or your reproductive organs, et cetera, they're sending them long distances in your body. Same thing with your pancreas and insulin uh, to go target a cell. This is what intercellular communication means between cells. So now that the cells have communicated, which is great because you got over 200 types of cells in your body. You have trillions of cells within your body. It's very important then to be able to talk to each other. How does it cause a response? Right. So when you send your text message and you send your WhatsApp message to somebody, somebody's going to do something unless it's a Snapchat that I don't understand. Maybe they're just watching, but they get your WhatsApp and they're going to do something. They're going to meet you somewhere. They're going to go get ice cream. They're going to go celebrate a birthday with you. Well, that ligand is the, the text message right? and it hits a receptor on the cell student. It causes a change in the receptor, which is going to set off a cascade. This is called reception, and this is called transduction. So it's going to transduce the message, and then it's going to cause a response. So as I like to say in class, I think it's best to learn through illustrative examples. And so the example I have for you, or I'm going to tell you about, would be adrenaline, right? Whether or not you're going to run away or, or fight something. And so let's say something scares you, you get the message, you see it, it comes through your eyes, it goes through your brain, and then that's going to send that message from your brain to your adrenal glands, which sit on top of your kidneys. The adrenal glands are going to release adrenaline or what we call epinephrine. This will be the epinephrine, students, the epinephrine is going to dock with this receptor. That receptor is then going to change. It's it's technically called a G protein receptor. It's going to have a conformational change. It's going to start this, the transduction of the message. You might say, why does it go through all these steps? And I asked you that in class. You did a great job. You talked about, hey, there, we can check on it that way. And we can really amplify the message. We can activate multiple uh, things called cyclic amps. And we can, multi we can activate lots of calcium. We can activate lots of things in a cell to really hit lots of uh, response. And so maybe that response is to activate an enzyme. So with epinephrine or adrenaline coming in, it's gonna activate an enzyme called phosphorylase. And phosphorylase is gonna to help to break apart glycogen so that way you have glucose to send out of your cell so that way it can go help you with fight or flight. 
right? Some other examples might be epidermal growth factor, and it's going to uh, be, it's going to dock here, and it's going to be transduced, and it's going to cause reading genes, and those genes are going to say, hey, let's divide or make some more cells. Um, what are some other examples? Insulin. So insulin is going to come, and it's going to be transduced, and then the response is going to be, hey, let's uptake this glucose. Uh, there's a myriad of examples. I wanted to show you that one signal or the epinephrine we just talked about can cause different responses in different cells. Here the adrenaline or the epinephrine hits your intestine, your stomach area, and it's going to constrict those blood vessels. It's going to push the blood away from your stomach, away from your intestine. In your muscles and in your legs, it's going to open those things. So it's going to say, hey, bring more blood here, bring more glucose here. The same message in a liver cell has nothing to do with blood vessels, right? In the liver cell, it's going to say, hey, let's break apart that glycogen and release glucose from the cell. So it's pretty cool, right? So from that PJs, from the uh, communication from your adrenal glands, you're going to send out this messenger. It's going to cause a signal transduction pathway, STP, stone double pilot, signal transduction pathway, which is going to cause a response. And in each type of cell, it can cause a different response. And this is how cell signaling in your body works. It's how cells talk to each other. All right. It's the WhatsApp of the cell world. All right, students, good luck studying.